In this video, I'll be providing my strategy for how to secure a property when entering into a best and final offer scenario. Welcome to Estate Agent Insider, your go-to channel for expert property tips and advice, or at least one day it will be. If any of this content sounds useful, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell a friend to tell a friend, and without further ado, let's get into the video. If you've been searching for a property, whether it's your first home or a buy-to-let investment, it's quite likely you would have come across the best and final offer scenario, or sometimes referred to as sealed bids. This will usually happen when there are multiple offers from buyers on the same property. If the offers are in the same region and the buyer's position is similar, it is likely that the seller will proceed to a best and final offer scenario, in which case they will give all buyers the opportunity to come back with their best and final offer within a set deadline, such as 48 hours. Once the deadline has passed, the seller will decide which offer to proceed with, assuming that at least one of the offers comes to an acceptable level. Generally speaking, if a property sale goes to best and final offers, this suggests there is quite a high level of demand on the property, which is a good sign from an investment point of view. However, if you've been involved in this process, you will know it can be quite stressful. On one hand, you don't want to overpay for the property, but on the other hand, you don't want to miss out on it altogether. So deciding on what figure you would like to submit as your final offer can be a tricky task. Because the bids are sealed, the estate agent is not allowed to disclose what other buyers have bid to each other, giving all buyers involved a fair chance to secure the property. So even if you ask the agent what the other offers were, they are unlikely to disclose this information. The best advice I can give to buyers entering into a best and final offer scenario is to offer the largest amount that you think is fair for the property and that you would be willing to pay. If your offer is unsuccessful, then at least you can have the peace of mind that you did everything within your power to secure the property and will leave the process without any regrets. It's also worth bearing in mind that the seller may not go to a best and final offer scenario 100% of the time when they receive multiple offers. If there is a big range in the offers they've received, or one of the buyer's position is a lot more favourable than another, then the seller may choose to reject the less favourable offers and accept or counter the more favourable offer. For this reason, I would suggest that if you are offering on a property that already has existing offers, then you want to make sure your offer is in the asking price ballpark, otherwise it's likely that your offer won't be considered. To conclude, it can be quite stressful entering into a best and final offer scenario but try not to be too disheartened as multiple offers suggest there is a high level of demand on the property and it is therefore likely to be a solid investment. However, I wouldn't recommend offering a silly amount to secure the property as this could come back to haunt you in the end. I would suggest you should offer the highest amount you would be willing to pay for the property and if your offer is still unsuccessful, at least you can have the peace of mind to know you did everything in your power to secure the property if you do end up missing out. If you would like to find out more about the best and final offer scenario, please do ask any questions in the comment section below. As always, do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.